Hi, my name's David Healy. Welcome to this class. And in this set of videos, we're going to look at something more specialized. We're going to look at the waveform control. And the waveform control doesn't seem to have a lot of information about it. And the manual, uh, the KSP manual, doesn't have a lot of information either. So I was working on a project recently that required the waveform control. And I struggled to find some of the information I needed. So a lot of it was experimentation to get the results I wanted. And I thought I'd share that knowledge with you in this series of videos. Now, my style of teaching, if you see my previous videos, you'll know that I like to just present a project and that's what you can see on the screen right now. This is what we're going to build in this, uh, in this set of videos. And I like to go through the scripting process from scratch and explain what I'm writing and importantly why I'm writing it, what what code I'm choosing to use. Because there are usually alternate methods that you could use and I, I'll suggest them as we go along if I see something that I think you could try doing it slightly differently then I'll put that idea forward. This isn't a beginner level class, this is an advanced class. I'm not going to go over the basics of KSP or uh, programming or scripting. Um, I expect you to know all the basics. You should be able to set up uh, Sublime Text 3 to work with the uh, the KSP compiler. I've got another video on YouTube about how to set that up if you're unsure. So that's, uh, that's kind of the level you should be at already. Uh, you should be able to write some code. This is for, this is really geared towards people who are already creating their own instruments but haven't ventured into the waveform control yet either because they're unfamiliar with it or just they haven't seen any uses for it yet. Now, I've found that the waveform control, there are, it is very quirky. Um, there are some sort of practical limitations to what you can do with it, but it is really good if you're doing a loop-based library. And that's the focus of this class. We're going to uh, be building a loop-based type instrument and uh, seeing how we can use the waveform in that uh, situation. So let's have a quick look at the demo instrument I've got here. So I'm actually not using loops, I'm using just some violin samples. I'm just going to hide this envelope so we can see the waveform. And we've just got three violin samples in here. Now I'm going to play it and you'll see the playback cursor go through the waveform. Uh, these lines that you can see are, are slice or beat markers and we'll, we're going to look at how to uh, add them in and manipulate them later on. So we just got some violin samples in there, nothing extraordinary about that. And we've got three samples and I'm just going to go back to this. So we've got three envelopes here and these are, we're going to look at how to script these and there are some tricks to doing it. So we've got uh, volume, pan and pitch. You can see that's already got a setting applied. I'm just going to reset that by holding control and clicking. And for each slice or each beat, we can adjust the envelopes. Do that for the pan as well and for the pitch. And then when we play back, we'll hear these uh, changes being in implemented. Uh, which one was I on? That one. So that was the pitch envelope here. Okay. And each of these envelope adjustments, they're actually per zone. So we've got the three. We've got three keys with samples on and if I, so if I play the first key actually and I'm going to raise the volume up there and now if I play the second key you can see it loads the envelope for the second key which we haven't made an adjustment on but I'm going to pull that down and then I'm going to press the third key and that one's got an adjustment on it already, we'll pull that down as well. So third key, second key, first key. So each key has its own envelope and they're unique to, to that key. So that's really good if you're doing a loop based library because it means your user can set up each loop individually how they want it and the instrument's going to remember that when they play back those loops. So that's really good. We can also I've put a reset button here so we can reset it and that resets for each loop. And if we go to the pan we can, did we make any change there? Oh we didn't, but if we had we could reset that as well. 
and the same with the pitch. We can also hide these envelopes. Now in this example I've got volume, pan and pitch but in the uh, in your own instrument you could have these controlling EQs or envelopes or other modulators and there's no reason to limit it to three you could have uh, well you can have as many as you like really um, but I thought I'll pick three for this demo and three simple ones volume pan and pitch uh, because it's a good way just to demonstrate the principle now other things I've added here is if you hold alt on the keyboard and you click in one of these slices and then you play back it will play back from that highlighted slice and again that's per key so if I go to the next key or the next one it uh, it remembers the selected slice and to get rid of that you just alt click on it again select a different one play back from there now this is really useful if you've got a loop with lots of different uh, things going on your user can just select the part they want and the instruments going to remember it next time they come to play that part and if your loop if your samples are looped when you get to the end it will loop back to the beginning now these ones aren't actually looped so if i play the last segment it's just going to uh, cut off at the end. Now something else we've got here which I uh, struggled with at first but we've got a reverse feature so we hit the reverse button and if I play if I hit the uh, the key to play the sample it's going to play from the end. Now that's fairly straightforward we're going to look at how to do that but the challenge was that when you highlight a segment I wanted it to play back in reverse from the selected segment so just like when we play it forwards it plays from that selected segment I wanted the same thing in reverse and that's actually a little trickier than you think because contact um, when it reverses the sample it automatically sees its zero position over here and I don't want to get into the details yet we'll look at that in scripting but this is a feature that I think you guys will find really helpful reversing loops and being able to jump in at certain points is great because loops often fade out towards the end or samples often fade out towards the end so if you do just have reversing from the very end your sample starts off with silence which isn't always what you want so it's good if you do have it reversed that you can jump in at a point where there's actually sound so we're going to look at all these features as we go through so it doesn't look like a really complicated instrument but I think it's going to take us a few hours to get through uh, the scripting and hopefully you'll learn a lot not just about the waveform control but about things that you can do in contact in general. Alright guys I'll see you over in the next video.